Before, Kirishima would have stayed in bed for days. Before, he'd have fretted and worried himself down to nothing. Before, he'd have sought the comfort and aid of another. But he's not the same man as before. He's stronger, he's proactive, and he's in love. Which is why, instead of crumpling in from his pain, he's pushing outward and doing everything he can to make sure that the people who helped him grow live to see their beloved watery home once again. Kirishima goes to his wardrobe. He lights a lamp and sets it beside him as he throws open wide the large wooden doors. He frowns at his uniform, pressed and clean, pristine, the first thing hanging before him. He dons it. He dresses fast and clips on the medals he received when his father's ship docked, for bravery. For capturing an entire crew of pirates. For finding a treasure map for Iowa to follow towards more riches, more land, more glory. They rest heavy over his heart. He glances at himself in his mirror. He looks like the epitome of a Kirishima. Buttons to his collar and his hair cut short once again. He refused to be bathed by the maids, embarrassed at the jewelry hanging from his belly button, and the scratches and bruises still tell tale on his skin, not yet totally faded away the day he arrived. He straightens his jacket and takes a deep breath. It's been two weeks since they returned. That's two since the crew has been thrown to the prisons. Since Bakugo has been in the prisons. The trial was held without the public, Kirishima included, much to his annoyance, to keep all the excitement for their hangings the following Sunday. Two weeks since he's seen him. He remembers his face. When he was marched off of his own ship, gray and haggard and seething hatred from between his teeth. He didn't even look at Kirishima. Kirishima looked at his feet, lest his father see his expression. After the panic subdued, he thought of nothing but a plan of escape. He forced his turmoil down to keep a clear cover and convinced his father that he was every bit the man he thought he was. He went to work almost immediately, stealing out into the night, not nearly as dark as a night at sea, mapping and planning and gathering supplies. It's not easy when you've been gone for so long, and everyone wants to catch up and hear about your cunning plan and success, which is exactly why he's dressing up now. A ball in his honor. While Kirishima will be trapped drinking wine and eating fancy shrimp, Bakugo and Mina and everyone are trapped, starving beneath his feet. The gallows date is approaching quickly, and Kirishima knows he must let Bakugo know about his plans as soon as possible. Whether or not he'll accept them, whether or not he's in a state to accept them, is uncertain. Kirishima's heart aches for him. Half of his lack of contact comes from his father's slight distrust that Kirishima needs to wave until the final moment, and from his own decision. He knows if he asked to see him, for whatever perfect lie of a reason, he'd be accompanied, and there's no way he would be able to look at Bakugo without his face giving him away. So he'll go alone when the party is in full swing and everyone's forgotten the reason of the occasion. The music that would usually sound so beautiful feels like it's shrieking in Kirishima's ears as he runs through the evening's plans. He wishes he had just a bit more time to go through it all in his head. He still needed to steal Bakugo's hand grenades from the crepitus in order to help start the fire in the government house. And he can't cut the government boat ropes until the night before the plan goes into action. There was still the trouble of making his way undetected to Ijiro. Kirishima blinks out of his thoughts, but they still swim around his head, and it takes a quick second for him to recognize the face in front of him. Dinky. Congratulations, man. His friend claps him on the back, cheeks already rosy from the wine. He's always dressed so fashionably when it comes to these events. Kirishima thinks even Bakugo would be envious of the hat he's wearing. He'd probably just take it, though, to be honest. Kirishima just nods in response, his mind slipping back to his plans again before his friend starts to speak again. Man, what an adventure. Dinky is beaming at him. I can't even imagine it. it must have been absolutely wild. Kirishima allows a little smile and a soft laugh. 
You have no idea. You'll have to tell me about it. I did, at the last dinner, Kirishima says, smiling more in spite of himself. I mean all the details. All the stuff you can't say in front of your mom and Aiko. Dinky winks. Kirishima laughs. Well, later then. Dinky nods and claps him on the back again. Looking forward to it. Kirishima's not sure how interested he would be in hearing about the gritty details of his escapades, but he can't help but wish this were a different time, a different life, where he could simply tell his friend in hushed whispers about his new love. Instead, Kirishima pretends to look like he's very busy most of the night, so people are less likely to approach him. He takes all the praise and shoulder squeezes and salutes until he feels like he's about to burst, and finally, finally slips out through one of the servant doors. He pulls off his boots and holds them in his hands as he near runs through the hallways, silent as he can. He pulls them on again just before he slips outside. He looks both ways before trotting on the gravel to get to the cobbled path that leads to the main street, which then leads to the prison about a block away. Luckily for Kirishima, it's attached to the courtroom in the execution area. It's patrolled, but Kirishima makes his way up to the guards. They reach to their shiny rifles as he approaches, but when they see his uniform, flashing medals and red hair, they stand to attention. Our apologies, sir. They don't question him, and Kirishima hopes they don't mention it later either. But Kirishima is sure the people he did talk to were drunk enough to get their times all muddled about when Kirishima was at the party, if worse comes to worse. They bow to him as he passes. Kirishima slips through the doors. His footsteps are loud now, echoing on the wet stone. The cells are all underground. There's no sunlight here. He's not aiming for the main hall of minor offenders, fairly clean and for show. He's looking for the pits where they keep the pirates, where soldiers torture and leave them to die if their hanging date is too far away to satisfy them. Kirishima grits his teeth. He's sure he always knew about this treatment. Why did he turn such a blind eye? Why, Kirishima gasps as he almost slips on the wet stairs, his thinking making him distracted another time too many. He takes a breath to calm himself. Torches light the way between each cell and the smell of death, decay, and urine grow thick and strong the further he descends. He takes a flame to carry with him. The first dungeons are empty, but Kirishima tries to mentally prepare himself for seeing Bakugo. He had no idea the state he'd be in, physical or otherwise. And on top of that, Kirishima was the goddamn last person he'd be wanting to see. Kirishima heaves open heavy doors, running through the prison map in his mind. He'd seen it plenty of times in the government house, and his time by his father's side the past couple weeks has allowed him enough opportunities to memorize the layout. He knows the crew are probably separate from Bakugo. Splitting them from their captain was a tactic often implemented in Iowa prisons, if Kirishima recalls his father's words correctly. He opens one last door and lifts his head to peek into each cell. There are only six in the whole room, and while the hallway was large, Kirishima thinks he could touch the back walls of the cells if he really stretched his arms. He places his torch on a handle between two cells. There's a man in the middle cell on his left. Kirishima is almost positive that he's dead, his chest not moving from what he can tell. He holds his breath and looks at the last cells. On the right, there's Bakugo. He's stripped to his hips and dirty. There's blood crusted over his stomach and torso, and leaking barely dried riverbeds over the delicate lines of his tattoos. A laceration runs from the side of his jaw and skips over his neck to bury into his collarbone and tear through his ribs. It looks like a single strike from a barbed whip, the way his skin is welted and raised, dirty and festering. His arms are bound above his head, fingers limp and white-blue in the flickering light. He raises his head as Kirishima approaches, and the wildness of his eyes take him aback. Kirishima breaks. He feels his heart shatter as he clutches his hands against the thick metal bars to steady himself. He can't tear his eyes away. He's already shivering, already crying. 
tears hot behind his eyes, stinging painfully. Bakugo, however, seethes at him in his lasting strength. His breath's hard through his nose, and Kirishima feels murderous intent from his bone-chilling glare. There's a dirty rag shoved into his mouth, and though Kirishima is sure he's parched, he can hear Bakugo growl. Please. Kirishima manages, his voice no more than a desperate whisper. One word takes all the precious air from his lungs, and he breathes deep as he presses his arm through the bars, reaching for the gag in his mouth. Bakugo looks like he'll snap at his fingers. But Kirishima only pulls away fast, so Bakugo can be free of at least one restraint. Bakugo coughs, breathing hard. There's blood crusted down his mouth, and Kirishima can't tell if a strike made his eyes deep purple or the lack of sleep. Kirishima stares at him, at a sudden loss. Dirty fucking royal. Bakugo's voice scratches raw from his throat. Fucking noble. All Kirishima's carefully planned words leave his brain, and all he can do is shake his head, silent and scared. He can't lose Bakugo. He can't die. And he can't die thinking that Kirishima betrayed him. I didn't know, Kirishima whispers. I came here as soon as... Bakugo spits at his feet. You mean you regret it? Well, tough fucking luck. You're a traitor through and through. No, Kirishima says, trying to press through the bars. Please, no. Bakugo stares at him hard. His eyes are cold and hating, and it terrifies him. What? Worried they fucked me? That's why you're here. You didn't seem to mind having your turn, too. Kirishima shakes his head and falls slowly to his knees. White pants not thought of as his knees dig into the dirty, muddy cobbles. No. He whispers, tears streaming down his face. The weight of his betrayal could only have been crushing to him, and the damage he's unwittingly caused seems beyond repair. But he tries again. I sent them to Aiko, Kots. Don't fucking say my name! Bakugo interrupts, shouting. He screams his frustration his raw throat breaking his words and his anger. Don't say my name. Kirishima looks up at him, unable to stop the tears flowing down his cheeks. I wanted her to know I was safe. I didn't think... Idiot. I am. To think I'd believe you. You have to. Kirishima begs. You have to. Why? Because it'll make you feel better. Can't have my death on your shoulders. Can't have my crews. Please believe me. Kirishima says. He lowers his voice. I have a plan, Captain. I'm going to get you out of here. And I... I don't have to come with you. If you don't want me to. But you'll be free. And so will the crew. I swear on my life. Your life means nothing to me. Bakugo says, lip upturned. Kirishima sobs, his face resting against the bars. You can't leave me, Kots. You, you can't. You have a ship to captain. You, you have a crew to command. You have Might's treasure to find, and, and I love you. Kirishima sobs. God, I love you. Bakugo is silent. Kirishima gathers his strength. I had no idea my letters were being reviewed. That's never happened to postage before at my father's estate. I, I just missed her. I thought she would share it with my mother, and they'd be comforted that I was indeed alive. I never intended for this, Captain. I never dreamed I'd hurt you. Kirishima looks up at him again, pleading, desperate. Bakugo's eyes are searching now, his jaw set and tired, but he looks less angry. But it could be exhaustion creeping in. Kirishima would have brought him wet fruits to eat, but he knew Bakugo would never in this moment eat from his hand. I promise, Kotsky. Kirishima dares to say his name again. I'm getting you out. I'll rescue your crew. It might very well be the last thing I do. 
but my life holds not a candle to yours. Vakago's eyes follow him as he stands, and he strains his arm through the bars once again. I have to go or I'm sure I'll be missed, Kirishima says. He touches his fingers, tentative against Bakugo's sore and swollen cheek, unsure if he's allowed to do so or if his restraints make his tenderness possible. I'm coming back for you, Kotsky. Your life isn't over yet. <laughs>